<laughs> okay, um, I have been I have been with Jesus today. He came to me, and um, oh wow, was that? I'm wrecked. <laughs> You're in good company, right? You're used to people talking to you wrecked. <laughs> oh, I um, I have received a a visit from Jesus today. That's to do with now. To do again with the time that we're in, and it was a very specific way that He spoke to me. Um, which I know is going to shift you into a different place. So as I speak, just open your heart. It's not a complicated, long message that I'm bringing to you, but it's straight from Jesus today. And there's going to be another level, uh, as I'm speaking, of just shift from where you are into where he's taking us now. So everything within you aligns into what he's doing with us. So I was um, holding you all in my heart and just sitting with Jesus. I had my my heart's attention on him, just resting. He was resting, just loving you all, loving Jesus, loving you all, being in agreement for the whack coming through, <laughs> Brian, <laughs> the glory pouring out and the revelation of Jesus just to be just pouring into all of your hearts. And um, Holy Spirit, are you, are you guys doing okay? Can you hear me okay? Just you can. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> the glory is getting really thick here. <laughs> so just releasing it to you. So as I was sitting there, Jesus suddenly came to me. And everything I'm saying, like I always do, this is for us. I was experiencing this for us. <laughs> okay, Jesus has started to move around among us. I can see him. <laughs> I can see him. Oh my goodness. I can see him. He's <laughs> he's touching a lot of your feet. He's moving around the room and just touching your feet and beginning to wash your feet. Washing the dust of your walk to this point off you. Re cleansing you, taking off the dust and the debris and the dirt and the mire that's come around your heart in this last season. He's resetting you right now. He's resetting you. He's resetting the bride. He's resetting you. He's shifting you from a natural walk in where we intermittently get blasted in the spirit and woohoo, our spirits are up again and off we go. And then before we know it, we're you know, pressing through the circumstances of life and the pressure, particularly at the moment with the world having gone crazyville. And uh, and uh, we've, you know, striving, struggling <clears throat> and pressing through on our own uh, emotional strength. And he's shifting right now. He's shifting us, resetting us into a supernatural experience of the bride. And we've got, we are about to be blown up. We're really about to be blown up, family, into a whole new experience. And he's doing it right now. So, so Jesus came to me and he stood behind me and he just gently kissed the, my head, the top of my head. And this was what he was doing for all of us. And as he did, I I was I remembered immediately in my spirit again the hebrew word for kiss you know in song of solomon one where the word says you know kiss me a shulamite speaking to you know, the bride speaking to the bridegroom kiss me with the kisses of your mouth and obviously that that the, that language is so rich in in revelatory meaning for us as we know but the word the word kiss 
is the word nashak. And forgive my pronunciation, it's probably not correct pronunciation, but it's in the English, it's N A S H A Q, nashak. And it's a powerful, powerful, multi leveled meaning. And obviously, one level of the kiss is the revelation of the love, the experience, exhilarating experience that comes to our hearts, to the human heart, when we feel the love of Jesus and the revelation, the infusion of who he is moves into us, Holy Spirit. And with that, the strength, the life-transforming strength, the fresh ruach breath of life coming from the heart of God as an infusion of, of revelation of who he is and Revelation not meaning just intellectual understanding, as you all know, but the infusion of the experience of him as our bridegroom king, as almighty God, and however he chooses to show you comes with the kiss. He awakens us, he wrecks us, he ravishes our heart, he fulfills us, he overwhelms us, he expands us, he transforms us. The kiss is, you know, let him kiss me. And I've said this before, like this is why sometimes, and I know others as well in our IMC community, particularly like you can't get past the let him, you know, so you sit there and just he breathes 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 and transforms you like showing you more of who he is and in this moment he wants to be known by us there's an invitation to a level of intimacy with him right now that's unprecedented we're being prepared literally everything he's been showing me it's all about us being brought forth as the mature bride now where we are so set apart for him where our life is so undistracted everything else has gone dim so to speak by comparison we our hearts are being reset to be so in love with him so consumed by him so attracted to him so intoxicated by him so experiencing the fulfillment through our union so able to now live as a supernatural mature bride leaning leaning surrendered intoxicated of him being our very breath now him being everything every, all that Jesus is is who we are now so our very nature our very life is no longer that that sensation of separateness is going now in this time the the delusion the the deception of separation is being dealt with not just the 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 theological understanding the the scriptures in you know um our understanding is being flooded with light we're understanding the the gospel more purely more completely but we're coming into understanding holy spirit the walk of the mature bride, who we actually are, who he actually is, that there is that sensation, the sensory experience of separateness, where there's a gap within us between our experience of him and our emotional day-to-day living is going. So that we're literally living in a heart posture of leaning of leaning and so so as Jesus kissed me and knew the kiss was for each one of us today this is he's kissing the bride he's kissing the bride awake so the one that's one aspect of the meaning of the Hebrew word nashak the kiss the other word for those of you that are not aware you some of you may well be but the other aspect of the meaning of this is a militant word. It means being equipped for battle. So the intimacy produces warrior capacity, absolute ultimate authority, Holy Spirit. It's wild, isn't it? It's wild, the bridal walk. So the the posture of the heart of utter surrender 
the Shulamite's life that we see displayed for us through the Song of Solomon. It's our walk, right? It's the bridal walk as she comes out of the wilderness leaning on her beloved, utterly abandoned, utterly surrendered into the strength of who he is, completely convinced of his love, completely secure in his love, one with him. This is the time now where we're going to really not just aspire after and experience intermittently, but we're going to live from union. Not in and out and in and out and in and out and up and down and stressed out and overwhelmed and then back in the spirit, but in union, no sense of separation, oneness. As a as a as the body of Christ, as the expression of God, as as the the expression, his exact likeness, his reflection, right? Consumed with him. I mean, this is what we reached for. This is what we've cried out for. This is what we've experienced intermittently. This is what's coming in entirety now as we are made ready for the culmination of the ages. We're going to become obsessed with the wedding. There's going to be such a sound coming from our life of, of the hope the surety of the wedding, the culmination of the ages, that it will release power. It will release power through us. It will sustain us and it will release power from our lives. And the demonic hates it, hates the sound of the exuberant joy, the intoxicating love as we start to be made ready for the King, as our hearts are brought by Holy Spirit now into a place where we're so in love with him. We're so in love with him in a manner in which he's worthy, right? We're the bride of the King of glory forever. And we are going to love him because we desire to, and that's his desire, right? The whole thing's about the relationship, but our hearts are being freed, made ready now in the experience of the kiss. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, to be so free, so utterly in love with him that we live obsessed with God. We live consumed. We have perspective of his sovereignty. We lean into the strength of his majesty as on the normal state of our interior life. And because of this level of confidence in him, of safety, of the sensation of our oneness wrapped internally within him, right? Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in the center of our spirit, one, inseparable. That will release governmental power on the earth that the world, I believe, has never seen because of the time that we're in. The demonic will not phase us. The oppression, the witchcraft, the nonsense, the drama. We're co-reigning, right? So we're coming into the time. We're in it, but our eyes are clearing now, living from the kiss, living from the strength that the kiss constantly brings into us. So lovers reign. Is the to use the language of royalty, right? The queen alongside the king operates in entire governmental majestic authority because of who they are. This is the work of, of Jesus, right? The restoration and fulfillment of all things. And he's chosen to do this through us and with us from within us. And so this is a big part of the expression that's coming now is what he was showing me today again. So as he kissed me, this infusion that I'm sharing just began to pour through me. And I knew this was what, as I'm speaking now, this is activating you. He's already, this revelation's already releasing into many of us. And there's just, you know, I'm speaking straight from his heart right now. I can feel it. I can feel him. This is fresh power. This is shifting us, shifting us, family, shifting us from a natural expression of the bride with spiritual intermittent expression to spiritual life, to even our relationship becoming supernatural entirely, fully undergirded by him. Jesus 
carrying the onus of responsibility for the success of our relationship with him, so to speak. We don't have to get wrung out, exhausted, trying to maintain our Christian walk and our connection with him. It's going to become effortless. Um, one, one, the, the experience of oneness as the as our constant way, a constant reality. So then, as Jesus kissed me, then I I felt this sensation of a heavy, the heavy sapphire ring on my engagement finger that he gave me many years ago in an encounter that I had with him that was is written in Ephesians, which I'll share in a second, and he reminded me of the encounter. Again, it's to do with what, what's happening to all of us. And I, I could just feel, I can still feel it. I could feel it. I've not felt the sensation of that ring for a long time, and it was really heavy on my hand. And then I noticed that I was wearing the majestic golden robe that is the, the, the regal robes, the regal bridal robes. And I was curled up, leaning into him. And again, there was this huge infusion, knowing that at one of the same one and the same time, <coughs> we lean. We are utterly consumed in the divine romance. <coughs> That's the core of who we are. No matter what is going on, Jesus is never distracted from that focus we are the apple of his eye right we are the object of his affection we are the purpose of life he is holy spirit's work right is leading us into the fullness of truth is bringing us forth fashioned and formed as the counterpart of god this is the work of redemption right and so jesus is always working his purposes out he's always focused on us and so i could feel that utter his so his affection and his focus on us and his utter love for us and then him there as the king releasing the power and the confidence into us as the bride that manifests as majestic supreme authority but it always flowing from this extraordinary love relationship that we have with our king flowing from his love for us our love back to him and then everything from here on in increasingly that we do that we pray that we decree flowing from this place the miracle working power of Jesus cascading out of us, the, the revelation of his, the beauty of holiness, the beauty of his nature, purity, holiness, just radiating out from us because we are completely laid down, completely in love, power, power pulsating through us. That that's, there's no more compromise, there's no more pull, there's no more... There's no landing place for the enemy to manipulate our hearts into needing anything else. All the all the the lesser lovers, so to speak, the, the the things that have distracted us and absorbed us historically, that have pulled at us, that have satisfied us inappropriately, gone, gone, gone. The needs of our hearts fully met in Him now. Really, really, really. And so I just sat there, wrecked, receiving his love, receiving the, the nash, nashach, the kiss, Holy Spirit, revelation of what time it is. And then he spoke these words to me for you, for us, for the bride. He said, you are soon to be paraded as a spectacle of the manifold wisdom of God in the nations as the mature bride. (laughs) 
It's beyond, isn't it? It's beyond our capacity to comprehend what that's fully going to look like. Radiant ones, radiant ones, so surrendered in our interior life that everywhere we go, we don't even need to speak. We're just so in tune with him, so sensitized to our oneness, to our union, that we're dripping redemptive power. We're dripping light. We're light bearers, right? Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, God carriers. Everywhere we go, we, we shift atmospheres by just being in the room because the stronger force, the energy, the radiance, the presence of Jesus is just pouring out of us everywhere we go, bathing everything in redemptive power, in healing, restorative, recreative power because of the presence of Jesus pouring out of us. And all we're doing is leaning on the inside, relinquishing control, resting, drinking. He's constantly breathing the kisses of his love through us. And we're constantly being changed and expanded through the unfolding revelation that's coming from his heart into our heart. This is our life. <laughs> ah, it's a different day. And then he reminded me of, um, of an experience that I had with him. Some of you will have heard me share this but it was a little while ago but it's to, again it's to do with right now and um i was i was speaking in america and we it was in the worship and an, an an archway the spirit realm just opened up and an archway was in front of me which jesus called the archway of faith obviously from song of solomon and as i he I, I knew in my spirit to step towards the archway of faith. And as I stepped towards it, <laughs> I saw Jesus standing there, the other side of the archway, again as the majestic King of glory. And as as I he beckoned me to come towards him, and as I stepped through the archway of faith, I could feel his power as king and then began to be exhilarated as the bride by his love. It was so pure and holy. I felt the purity of who he is pouring into me again and his love. And as I stepped in, I went into him. I merged into him. So he was showing me through the experience, the reality of, of what's happened to us, you know, the oneness that he is within us, the King of glory. We just very often have been desensitized to these truths and he's igniting this now, particularly the aspect of who he is as King. You know, we know him as shepherd, we know him as saviour, we know him as healer and deliverer and all the different aspects of the glory of who he is, the majesty of who he is, but the particular part now that he's unveiling for us and breathing into us is is who he is as king and this is going to release and the or we release the awe of god we are going to our hearts will be transformed under the impact that the tutorage of the spirit of the fear of the lord the awe of god it will it will be a it will it, it, it will increase and empower us to walk in an even greater degree of holiness and utterly set apart and uncompromised in our choices and just simplified on the inside and literally in love walking through the world walking through the circumstances releasing redemptive power going where he says to go moving synchronized in tune with his heart knowing his heart on every matter him framing up our reality not the world not the narrative not the news feeds not the nonsense that comes out under demonic influence but not you know like that like the early church knew him 
it's a whole other area, a whole other revelation. I've been having time with the Apostle Paul again, but that's that's for another day. But, but the, the it's all about coming forth now, understanding what he's done, understanding what he did at the cross, understanding the power of the blood, understanding who he is as the King of Glory, understanding with our hearts on fire, living in the pure, uncontaminated gospel, living in as the expression of what he did, living as the result of Golgotha. And so I stepped through the arch, I went into him as the king, we became one, and then he he wrapped his arms around me and we were pulled up, it looked like this huge ribbon, we were pulled up and into an amphitheater and the walls of the sides of the amphitheater were angels. There were levels after thousands and thousands and thousands of angels and I was there fully aware that I was there as all of us as the bride and as I, as I was with Jesus and just looking around at the angels fully immersed in the experience as I looked around I realized they were marveling and I was in the I was in the word of God in Ephesians you know that basically the angels are watching as Jesus parades us as an expression of the manifold wisdom of God and so he was, I stood next to him and I was wearing the golden robe. I was wearing the crown. I was holding the scepter. I was shining with his nature. And as we are, I was seeing who we are from heaven's perspective. And I was aware that Jesus was showing the bride off. And, and it was the aspect of royalty is what the angels were marveling at. They were seeing what Jesus is bringing forth through the expression of who we are now, which is kingship, majesty, governmental authority, all coming from a heart that is completely undone by his love and that truly loves him. In the, you know, voluntary love, true, authentic, utter love and trust that comes from seeing him and being satisfied by him and being undone by him. Everything that our hearts reach for, even in their numb states, even in their compromised states, right? The little tiny flickers sometimes, it's still authentic love that undoes him. And so I experienced what's happened what, and what, what's happened to us and what's happening to us now, this, this awareness is breathed into us as he keeps kissing us awake. And then things like uh, fear will not exist within our interior life in the way it, they, it has. I was sharing this with some of our, our RIMC community last night, you know, the, uh, or yesterday, uh, that Jesus is breaking fear where fear has controlled us and manipulated us and framed up our hearts and our emotional states and plagued us um he's dealing with that now it will be dissolved that the influence of fear we might fear it feel it but it won't control us it will move through us and on and out um and it's again it's this the undergirding of the our heart's recognition of his sovereignty, experience of his sovereignty as king. We will have perspective. It's happening now. This isn't something in the future is happening now. And even now when I'm speaking, it will be confirming for many of you. He, he's resetting and he's adding to and he's doing this sovereignly. I'm literally just sharing the perspective, the, the, the revelation and the perspective he's, he's giving. But this is his word, his testimony. Um, he's taking us into the experience of the angels of Ephesians. The angels are watching and marveling at the grace of God as, as he is 
parading us and about to on the world stage. He is about to, like he said, you are soon to be paraded as a spectacle of the manifold wisdom of God. People are going to look and they're going to see him and they're going to feel him and they're going to experience his miracle working power and they're going to experience his love and they're going to see a bride that is besotted, that is mature, that looks like him, that's utterly laid down. Holy Spirit. to do that to get into this it's just he's doing it he's doing it he's doing it we just have to gaze we just have to turn the posture of our heart onto him and just look at him look at him and let him kiss you (laughs) wow there's two other parts that he that i i really felt to share so we're actually living like I told our family yesterday, our IMC family, we're actually living right now in Song of Solomon 4.6. I'll read it in a second, but that's where we are. This is the mature bride where we will not be afraid of walking in any level of suffering. We won't feel it. So whatever you're going through, he is going to so garrison your heart with his shalom so block garrison through over your heart and mind so fill you with 
the experience of his love and undergird you so powerfully that you will trust him and just be able to let go and the circumstances that have been crushing and impossible for you, you will become, well, he will become, you, you, as you lean into him, your natural, supernatural default position all the time, you'll find this in the days and weeks ahead, will become who do you want to be as the solution in this situation, Jesus? And he will reveal his majesty in those situations, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, shifting demonic structures that are controlling or trying to control. Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> the mature bride leans right she leans she lives internally in a posture of surrender and adoration falling more and more and more in love with jesus because of holy spirit's work in her heart every day in the divine romance the sensation of separation completely gone <laughs> understanding that it is finished and we're now living from the victory of Golgotha <laughs> From Golgotha. When Jesus spoke the last words on the cross, when he said, it is finished, remember the word he spoke in Aramaic, Western Aramaic, and also is translated in the same word in Hebrew, is hala. <laughs> it is finished. That word means bride. <laughs> the last thing Jesus said when he gave up his spirit was bride, 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 bride. Everything was taken care of so he could bring forth a new creation that would be filled with his nature, that would be his counterpart forever, and we're it. And we're being flooded with light now. We're being prepared for the culmination of the ages. I've been in history on the last day. <laughs> I've seen the moment Jesus comes into full view. <laughs> We are going to be so saturated with this reality that we're going to live from heaven into the earth, from within his heart, from union. Union, the union. I've been saying this a lot recently. The union is what enables encounters. Encounters don't enable union. The, the, the reality of living experientially in the, in the encounter realm is going to be normal because it is normal. <laughs> it's being switched on. Ooh, we've been tangled up in religion. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's gone. That day's gone. <laughs> lovers who walk in absolute authority through surrender intoxicated hearts on fire <laughs> clothed in humility living in the awe and wonder restored to our hearts of the majesty of who he is with perspective the, the, the realm of darkness will see it for what it actually is, defeated, disarmed, waiting to be evicted as the bride moves into position. Holy Spirit, 
to bring the kingdom on earth, right? To implement the rule of the king, to co-reign with him as we lean and we allow him to be the solution in every situation, to flow through us with power and truth. The light shining in the darkness, right? John 1, and the darkness never being able to extinguish it because the light's God. He's God. He's creator, right? <laughs> These truths, I'm telling you, family, they're going to explode. They're going to explode in our hearts as power, as dunamis power. The truths that we've become so familiar with, the scriptures that we've been so familiar with, are just going to come alive <laughs> and incarnate through us. And he just is asking us to say, yes. <laughs> Yes, I am willing. I am willing, Jesus. This is what I desire. I desire to run with you in mature ministry now, looking like love, leaning, leaning as the mature bride, as the expression of holiness. No separation. One heart, one mind, Holy Spirit. So in song four, verse six, the Shulamite says to Jesus, just say this in your heart as you feel to. I've made up my mind until the darkness disappears and the dawn has fully come. In spite of shadows and fears, I will go to the mountaintop with you, Jesus. The mountaintop of suffering love and the hill of burning incense. Yes, I will be your bride. In this place of suffering love, is the place where we really discover the truth that he truly is, our everything. He is the solution. He is the deliverer and healer. He is miracle working power, transformational power. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is creator God. He is life. He's breath. His love. We're going to be compelled by love, motivated by love. In everything we do, everything we say, all that will matter to us as we go forward, honestly, all that will matter to us is to move the heart of the King and to express the heart of the King. Nothing else will matter. And we'll feel his love surging through us and it will compel us it will be our motivating force all the co internal complexities that we've had of, of <coughs> different motivations everything's becoming pure we're becoming a pure expression now lovers lovers who co-reign in the purest, highest expression. And then Jesus says to us in response, every part of you is so beautiful, my darling. Perfect is your beauty, without flaw within. Now you are ready, my bride, to come with me as we climb the highest peaks together. Come with me through the archway of trust. We will look down from the crest of the glistening mounts and from the summit of our sublime sanctuary. Together, we will wage war. In the lion's den and the leopard's lair, as they watch nightly for their prey. For you reach into my heart with one flash of your eyes, I am undone by your love my beloved, my equal, my bride. 
you leave me breathless. I am overcome by merely a glance from your worshipping eyes, for you have stolen my heart. I am held hostage by your love and by the graces of righteousness shining upon you. How satisfying to me, my equal, my bride. Your love is my finest wine, intoxicating and thrilling, and your sweet, perfumed praises so exotic, so pleasing. Your loving words are like the honeycomb to me. Your tongue releases milk and honey, for I find the promised land flowing within you. The fragrance of your worshipping love surrounds you with scented robes of white. My darling bride, my private paradise fastened to my heart. A secret spring are you that no one else can have. My bubbling fountain hidden from public view. What a perfect partner to me now that I have you. Your inward life is now sprouting, bringing forth fruit. What a beautiful paradise unfolds within you. And then as we <clears throat> move through into chapter 5-1, this is where we're at as the bride. We're moving into this place of <clears throat> victorious, and I don't even want to call it warfare, victorious implementation of the rule of the king. And whether we're in some of the most complex settings on earth, whatever the situation is, we're going to live here. Our interior life will be consumed with love for our king. Our hearts exhilarated and on fire and with perspective. We won't move in our own strength. We will move in his strength. Going into the lion's den and the leopard's lair dispersing darkness. One of the things that Jesus showed me a little while ago is that I saw the whole, I went outside of the world and I saw the whole earth and it was framed in this pyramid structure. And then I watched, I knew this pyramid structure had framed up for us the reality, the narrative, the sound the way of life on the planet quite largely. And then I watched as the light of Jesus just engulfed the structure and everything dissolved. The light of Christ shined into the darkness. <clears throat> the darkness didn't dismantle. It ceased to exist. So I believe, yes, we're walking through very difficult times. <clears throat> but in the end, history wraps up with a wedding. In the end, the earth is his and everything in it. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord, that word means the experience of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the seas. We are, our, our spirits are, right? A doorway between heaven and earth through which God expresses into this realm and he's now with us in us inseparable god is hidden in the midst of us on this in this planet and satan knows that <laughs> and we are about to express him in an unprecedented way and release the glory and release the light and release the sound and release the presence of the sovereign king, of the creator. And there's nothing the enemy can do about it. Because Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, Jesus descended and then ascended to bring about, to begin the restoration and fulfillment of all things. He brings all things in human history into conformity with the counsel of his will. We don't know what that's going to look like, but that's the word of God. And it all wraps up with a wedding. And so now 
we are being prepared for that <coughs> for that moment for that moment that's the purpose of life right <laughs> nothing else matters and the acceleration of the preparation of us and the earth is underway and so every experience every encounter that, that i've had for a long time now has been to do with this and he's simply just drawing us back to his feet out from the distractions and the noise back to his feet He's just saying, will you let me? Will you let me? Kiss your heart awake and release my purity and power into every fiber of your being. <laughs> my equal, my bride. He's leading us into all truth, right? Holy Spirit's leading us into all truth now. The enemy thinks he's shaking and destroying the nations and he's coming after Christians and this and that and blah, blah. It's like, and the Holy Spirit's going, well, yeah, you're in Song of Solomon 4 right now. Leaning, intoxicated, in love transformed, exhilarated, me meeting your every need. And the world will look upon us and they will know that we are his because of the love, because of the love, the supernatural agape love that shines from our lives as we live our life from the secret place, from union, every moment. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, to so just receive. I just, I just encourage you to. I'm going to hand back over to you in a second, Ben. But just stay with him here. Let him kiss you with the kisses of his mouth. Breathing fresh Ruach breath into you, particularly into the, the tired parts of your heart, restoring you, reviving you again, shifting you into a supernatural experience of your love relationship with him. <laughs> Final thing I just felt to share then, and then I'll hand back over to you, Ben, <laughs> if you can speak. <laughs> it's as we we see in Song of Solomon five. Is it five? The mature bride begins to become the nourishment of the emaciated bride, Jesus begins to take us out, bring us around people who are really, really malnourished, really emaciated to the, re and the revelation, something I was sharing again with, with the IMC yesterday, this, the, um, the revelation that is within us, the, the knowledge of Jesus as he's revealed himself to us will become 
it's like they're like the nutrients that will feed us and cause us to become supernaturally whole and healthy and vibrant and that nourishment so to speak will feed the bride who's malnourished and together we will grow and we will go get strong and we will shine and then the nations will come to the brightness they'll be attracted to the brightness of Christ as we lift him up this way he will draw all people to himself all men to himself right they're going to taste and see that he's good they're going to feed on the truth and be set free and wake up and be transformed so I'm paraphrasing Song of Solomon 5 you can read it for yourselves but the Lord invites people to come and feast on the bride and it's the revelation of who he is the, the, the knowledge that we have of him that will pour out of our lives and transform people because the the bride is is malnourished a lot a lot of our family worldwide are starving for nutrients revelation and experience of jesus as we know there's a desperation for experience and that's what's coming now and then the nations they are desperate for truth do you know it wasn't it was part of the way through lockdown we were doing some research and we discovered that the most Googled thing in the world, it was a matter of maybe three or four months ago, something like that, was how do I pray? So the harvest, the harvest is ripe. And I believe we are in the time of the greatest awakening. The As we move towards the culmination of the ages, the awakening of the church and the awakening of the nations it's and i don't feel it's going to be like a big i don't think it's going to look like it has in the past it's like a the the light of christ is flooding out of us the truth the revelation the supernatural expression of who he is will bathe the nations with truth and transformational power and people will just wake up come home open their hearts to him and see I, I just, yeah, I think we're in the most exciting time. The enemy's overplayed his hand. Jesus, from heaven's perspective, it looks very different. It looks like I've been sharing. This is all about him now. And we're going to be literally, utterly in love and obsessed. And consumed and motivated like i said completely by pleasing his heart what matters to him and expressing him <laughs> so kiss every single one of us again jesus every single one just kiss kiss our hearts awake every part of our hearts every chamber and i don't know where, where ben whether you're you're going to do a time of worship now but just get honestly the word i've brought just give him time he came to me today for you and to show me what he's doing in the bride holy spirit Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I encourage you just to stay in song one <laughs> until you're wrecked. <laughs> ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just keep gazing, keep gazing, keep looking at him with the eyes of your heart, looking at Christ within, breathing in as he releases Ruach breath into you, the kisses of his, the revelation of his love and his power, his majesty, who he is, 
Holy Spirit <laughs> making you powerful, powerfully equipped for battle and utterly in love with him and completely secure in his love. Supernatural bride, mature bride, rising. The world looks so different from heaven's perspective, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 I can see the cloud of his presence, not just within you, but above you, like brooding, just brooding. hand over to you Ben and let you guys just go deeper deeper into just spend some more time with him worshipping whatever you're going to do now just stay with him stay with him in this beautiful place <laughs> I'm going to need to go off but I love you all the future's bright family Love you so much. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>